Hey all of you sheepies near and far, welcome to worship whenever you have a chance to view this. Today is the 12th of May, 2024. Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. Let me pray us in. Lord Jesus, we come before you and today we talk about your ascension into heavens. Help us to have eyes of faith, to follow in your steps. Help us to soar as you call us to. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we are in Acts chapter 1 today, verses 1 through 11, the ascension of Jesus. I'm going to also give us some scripture as we travel along today. So you can open your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Paper airplanes. When I was a kid, I used to love to make paper airplanes. I can't remember the exact age that I learned to make and fly one, but I do remember having contests with my grandma's neighbor boys, Mark and David Cannonberg. You'll hear more about Mark and Dave next week in our sermon. My grandma Chubb was a crafty sort of gal and Auntie Barbie taught Sunday school. So of course she had an endless supply of construction paper glue, and of course that big old box of crayons. Once we got our airplanes all decked out, we had contests of who could fly their airplanes the farthest. It kept us occupied, at least for a little while. My grandma was our biggest cheerleader. God bless Grandma Chubby on this Mother's Day. A little history of paper airplanes. The earliest paper airplane was said to be created around 500 BC, some 2,000 years ago in China. There are even world records associated with paper airplanes, just like anything else. The longest distance flown by a paper airplane was 226 feet 10 inches by a guy named Joe Ayob in 2012. And then the longest flight time was 29.2 seconds in the air, almost a half a minute of soaring that paper airplane. Sometimes flying airplanes was considered mischievous. Ever get in trouble for flying one? Perhaps you've gotten in trouble at school, uh, flying them in class. Maybe you were writing a note and you pitched it on over to your friend or that special someone that you perhaps had a crush on. In the New York Stock Exchange of the 1880s, there was a $10 penalty for flying paper airplanes. And let's think about that. 1880s, $10 was a pretty hefty penalty in those times. Even the Wright brothers built many paper airplane models to help them learn about flight before the real thing. Paper airplanes have always been connected to creativity, imagination, and have played a part in our human quest for flight. On our liturgical calendar today, we celebrate another form of flight, the ascension of Jesus into heaven. We've been celebrating these great 50 days of Easter. Well, we aren't quite done yet. But the ascension of Jesus happened 40 days after Easter. We'll have 50 when we get to Pentecost next Sunday. In Matthew's Gospel, we don't hear about any post-resurrection sightings. Only the women actually see Jesus on resurrection morning, with Jesus instructing them to go and tell the men. I love that, don't you? Again, First preachers were women because go and tell equals proclamation. So if we follow Matthew's lead, the men haven't actually seen Jesus until here in this place. We know from other gospel accounts that they, they have, especially Luke. Luke is so good with these post-resurrection sightings, as well as John with that breakfast on the beach that we looked at last week. But Matthew leads us straight to the mountain to say goodbye for now to Jesus as he ascends, going up into the heavens. 
So why do you suppose Matthew takes us from the risen, resurrected Jesus in the graveyard right to the ascension? Well, in the middle of that, we have the report of the guards that we looked at at Easter morning, fabricating the story, taking the bribe of money to falsify the, the story of the resurrection. But I have some thoughts. Of course you do, PL. <laughs> and it has to do with being a disciple of flight. Matthew writes to a Jewish audience, you see. He is always pointing back to the Old Testament to back up his claim that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. His readers would have understood the Old Testament prophetic voice and the people of the Old Testament knew about flight. They knew about going up. Every year, the Jewish people would ascend, ascend, going up three times to Jerusalem for three main Jewish festivals, Passover, Pentecost, and the Festival of Booths that was held in the fall. I say ascend because that is literally what they did. Jerusalem, sometimes called Zion, when we see Zion and Jerusalem, they're the same thing is up high. Jerusalem is 2,575 feet above sea level. Those traveling had to climb. They had to ascend first to the holy city. Then once they got there, there were a lot of stairs around Jerusalem, especially in the temple. So yeah, my knees would hurt already. Even now, when we see many of our ancient cathedrals, they are often built up high and often have a whole lot of stairs. No handicapped accessibility there. I can remember the steps of St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Lismore. Jim's uh, a Catholic, and so that is the church that he grew up in, and trying to climb those stairs on Christmas Eve wearing not so much climbing sort of shoes, you know. They've since installed a more accessible entrance. If you read the book, Pillars of the Earth, it's about building ancient cathedrals. You will find that the builders are indeed making a spiritual point, ascension to God. As the people of Israel ascended to Jerusalem, they would sing praise songs, psalms of ascent as they went up, up, up. My favorite psalm of ascent, Psalm 121. The praise team leader, the leader, would call out, I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? And then the people following along would reply, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. Well, thanks God for watching out for my slippery shoes, right? And so ascending was biblical. These disciples of flight knew about it. But here they stood, gathered around Jesus on the Mount of Olives on this last day that they would see him in this life. The first chapter of Acts, which is a continued story from Luke's Gospel, gives us the best account of the Ascension, or at least I think so. The disciples want to know if now is the time that Jesus is going to restore their kingdom, meaning Israel, meaning to overthrow Roman rule. Remember, they had hoped he was the one. That's what the, that reads the, the two disciples walking along the Emmaus Road were discussing. They had hoped that he was the one that would come and restore Israel. And then the arrest and the crucifixion happened and their hopes were dashed. But now he's back. Maybe now is the time they're thinking. Well, it was the time for restoration, but again, not like they were expecting. Because in a few moments, Jesus is going to commission them with the power and authority to go and be and tell in his name. To make disciples to baptize and to be witnesses first in the town of Jerusalem, then throughout Judea, take it a little farther, 
then Samaria, yes, to the place that good Jews really weren't supposed to go, especially to the Gentiles, and then to take it to the ends of the earth. Take the gospel everywhere, Jesus says. This, this is your commission. It's not just a mere suggestion. This is our call, friends, not just those 11, but to you and I in this place today. And so he blesses them up, and he goes up, 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 up. So I'd like for us to briefly look at four stages of the ascension, okay? You might want to take some notes. Four stages. The first stage, earth to sky, earth to sky. This is the stage that we can physically see with our eyes. The disciples are watching as Jesus ascends physically until a cloud hid him from their sight, which takes him out of their view from the naked eye. We understand this stage. We can see it. The next three stages of the ascension, though, we can't view with our physical eyes. It is here that we need to have eyes of faith, a different kind of lens. When NASA looks at rockets after they have ascended past the Earth's atmosphere, they need to use a different lens to view. In the same way, we need eyes of faith. If we don't have faith, eyes of faith, we can't see it. In 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagorian was the first man in space. The then Russian leader Nikita Khrushchev and an atheist mocked the idea of heaven above the earth, saying, why are you clinging to God? Here, Gregorian flew into space and he didn't encounter God, so it's not up there. If we don't view the ascension with eyes of faith, well, then we will never see heaven. Our second stage of the ascension is in the heavenly realms. The heavenly realms. Hebrew 2.9 tells us that we see Jesus crowned with glory and honor at the right hand of God. So how do we see him? Only with eyes of faith. This second stage, Jesus passed through, it tells us, beyond the physical realm. Hebrews 4.4 4 says, since then we have had this great high priest who passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. The spiritual realms are, are observing Jesus here as he passes through. Now we get the third stage. It's more of a destination. Hebrews 9 verses 11 and 12 tells us that he entered the heavenly temple, the heavenly holy of holies, and pre he presented once and for all his blood shed on the cross as our priest. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. In other words, it isn't part of God's earthly creation. We are told in the Old Testament that both the tabernacle of Moses, that was a tent, a portable tent, and the temple of Solomon were built according to the pattern and vision shown to Moses and then to David to have his son Solomon build. This pattern, the author of Hebrews tells us, was a shadow an earthly representation of the real temple in heaven. Just like 1 Corinthians 13 tells us, what we see in this life is like this puzzling reflection in the mirror. But one day we will see things with perfect clarity. The earthly temple mirrors the heavenly one, but only in part. Why? Well, we need to look at that final stage of the ascension. Our final stage, stage four. This stage is above every created realm, the place where God alone dwells. 
The people of Israel thought that God dwelt, first dwelt in the tabernacle, that portable tent that Moses constructed per divine instruction. And then they thought he dwelt in the temple that Solomon built, again, per divine instruction. But God never dwelt in either. God dwells above every created realm, a realm that we creatures that have been created by the creator cannot enter. Hebrews 7.26 tells us that Jesus has been exalted, lifted up, exalted, <coughs> higher than the heavens. So then where do we believers go? We mortal creatures go when we die. Well, we ascend to the heavenly realms, this second stage, past the earthly realm, into the, the spiritual realm. Do I believe that we get to see God face to face when we die? Maybe not, maybe not, until the day when Jesus comes back and the earth and the heavens are made one, whole, restored, fully. I also believe that God is not up or down or right or left. God is spirit. God is everywhere. But I also believe as God's creatures, there is a place that only is reserved for God the Father and Jesus the Son. We are beneath both of them. We are not equal, friends. We are not created equal with God and, and Christ. God is God, and we are mere creations and reflections of him if we allow ourselves to be used for his goodness. We use this up language to understand that God is exalted. God is lifted higher, <coughs> higher and higher, you know, the song. Jesus is lifted higher, ascended to the Father, and as Jesus passed through, the angels fired up their iPods, and the heavens were filled with loudest praise. Holy, holy, holy. As Jesus was being lifted from this life, he left us some instructions as disciples of flight. And just like making paper airplanes, <coughs> are you making a paper airplane at home while you're listening? You have to follow the instructions. You have to get the folds right, or they're not gonna fly correctly. If, if your folds aren't right, instead of soaring, your airplane's going to sink quickly. Just as the Wright brothers used the paper airplane to understand more fully how to fly, we can use Jesus' example and look heavenward to have eyes of faith, to hope in the things to come. Our Creator created us to create a heaven on earth until we are lifted up to the heavenly realms. And so, Lord, we pray, help us to soar in your name. Help us to have eyes of faith and lead others to you this day and always. And all God's people say, amen. Thank you for tuning in on this Mother's Day weekend. Looks to be a good weekend, so I hope you get out and about a little bit. Thanks again for the prayers for my dad. He's doing remarkably well with hopes. And uh, we're on deck to probably come home the end of May or the first week in June, prayerfully. All right, bye for now. Thanks for tuning in.